Hello, everybody. Uh, this is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for July the 5th. Uh, this is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim, and I am sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Uh, CircuitPython is a version of Python that's designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold a meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel as well as the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday, uh, such as this week. We're having the meeting on Tuesdays. Uh, generally, if there is a holiday, U.S. holiday on a Monday, then we will bounce it over to the Tuesday, but keep the same time of 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific. There's a notes document that accompanies the meeting uh, and recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts that you are most interested in. Uh, the meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, depending on how many folks are around. Um, so you can skip around to the parts that you are most interested in using the timestamps uh, in the notes doc. After each meeting, uh, we'll post a link to the next meeting's notes document inside that CircuitPython dev channel on Discord. Check the pinned messages there uh, to find the, lotus, the latest notes doc throughout the week. And you can always add uh, status updates, hug reports, and in the weeds topics um, throughout the week if you think of them. So uh, the meeting will be held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is going to be a look at the CircuitPython and Python on hardware uh, in the community. It's a review of the Python on microcontrollers uh, newsletter, or typically it's a preview of the micro Python on microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, this week it has, of course, come out because we're doing the meeting on a Tuesday, so we'll be looking at some of the goodies from that newsletter this morning. Uh, the second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project, a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all working on. The third part, and the first of our round robins, is the hug report section. This is an opportunity to highlight good things uh, that folks in the community are doing. Take time to recognize awesome folks in our community and beyond. Uh, the next part is status updates. This is the second of our two round robins. Uh, status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what you've been working on. Take a couple of minutes to tell us about what you've worked on in the last week and what you intend to work on until the next uh, meeting next week. Uh, and then the fifth and final part is in the weeds section. Uh, in the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or they can be identified ahead of time uh, and listed down in that in the weeds section in the notes document. Um, all right, with that, we will get going with community news. Let me get the first timestamp here. We are. So first up in uh, news this week is the Raspberry Pi Pico W. On June the 30th, Raspberry Pi launched three new members of the uh, Pico family. The Raspberry Pi Pico W is priced at $6 and brings 802.11n wireless networking to the Pico platform while retaining uh, complete pin compatibility and adding an Infineon CYW43439 uh, wireless chip onto that Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, so check out the Raspberry Pi blog. I believe there was an Adafruit blog post as well uh, about the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, next up is a uh, project that was shared in the newsletter this week uh, that caught my eye. This is a RGB uh, hexagonal keyboard powered by CircuitPython. Let me get a timestamp in there. Uh, this is a beautiful custom keyboard with colored hex, uh, hexagonal keys. The key switches are kale chocks. Uh, the key caps are custom resin. Uh, and it's powered by a Solder Party RP2040 stamp with a custom uh, CircuitPython build. And there are links here to Twitter, uh, as well as the firmware that runs that keyboard. Uh, next up is uh, this week on the Tom's Hardware PyCast, uh, we'll feature CircuitPythonista Deborah Ansel. So Tom's Hardware PyCast Videocast Week has a special guest, uh, Deborah Ansel, at Geek Mom Projects. Uh, to talk about her fantastic range of LED-infused projects from bags, uh, wearables, robots, blobs, uh, and more. Chances are Geek Mom Projects has found clever ways to add RGB LEDs to it all. 
Um, so check out links there to Twitter and YouTube. Uh, so that is it for the review this week. And just a reminder, these items came from the CircuitPython weekly newsletter. Uh, this is a community-run news, uh, newsletter that is emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available on adafruitdaily.com. Uh, it highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. You can contribute your own news or projects. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, probably the best is to go ahead and go to Discord, uh, excuse me, to uh, GitHub and submit a pull request if you're familiar with that process. Um, if you aren't, that's fine as well. You can also tag um, Anne on Twitter. Uh, or with, uh, excuse me, using the hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter. And then uh, if you're not using Twitter, you can also just email to cpnews at adafruit.com to send those uh, news items in for inclusion in the newsletter. Okay, so next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So I will read the overall section. Uh, this week, we had 22 pull requests merged across the whole project uh, from 14 authors. Uh, let's see, I did not go through and highlight ahead of time, but a couple of names uh, just skimming through here that don't look familiar to me are Lisa Apple, uh, let's see, Julian Ortiel, Klox, um, R.T. Wiley, uh, Xuhow, uh, XUHOW and TC Franks. Uh, those are folks that are perhaps newer or maybe less frequent contributors. So thank you to all of those folks as well as all of our um, standard, uh, you know, contributors ongoing. Um, we had eight reviewers this week. Um, looks like the usual suspects there. So thank you again to all of our reviewers. Um, this week we had 18 closed issues by eight people uh, with 27 opened issues by 21 people. Uh, again, that's overall. Uh, so next up, uh, we will hear about the core. Uh, Scott, are you available to tell us about the core this week? Sure, happy to. Uh, thanks for hosting, Tim. Uh, so for the numbers for the core, we have 14 pull requests merged from eight different authors. Uh, Lee Sapple and Chu Hao are new, so thank you to them. Uh, we had five reviewers, so thank you to all of our reviewers as well. You make it possible to support eight authors and more. Uh, we have 16 open pull requests. Uh, four of those are uh, 100 days or older. Um, so please take a look and uh, try. If you're involved in any of those pull requests, please take a look. There's a number that are for specific boards. So maybe if you want to get uh, start contributing to CircuitPython, take a look at those boards and see if you can do any testing to get those in. Um, Issues-wise, we had six closed issues by two people, 11 open by 10, so we're up five. Um, for a total of 536 open issues. Uh, as we get uh, issues in, what we do is we uh, kind of triage them into milestones, and that gives kind of prioritization for Adafruit-funded folks um, within CircuitPython, the CircuitPython community. Um, we have two open issues for 7.3x. Those are kind of urgent, um, urgent stable fixes. We have 50 open issues for 8.0, which is, is pretty large, and we need to go through them uh, at some point, when we're close to releasing 8.0, what we'll do is we'll um, go through that list and then uh, fix the ones that we decide to leave there. Uh, we also have 459 long-term issues. Those are things that are not a priority, but would be nice to have at some point. And we also have two issues not assigned to Milestone, so we'll take a look at those. Um, and that's it for the core. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Uh, no problem. Next up, we will send it over to Katni to tell us about the libraries. Hello. All right. So this section applies to all of the Adafruit Circuit Python libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore Circuit Python underscore, as well as a couple extras. Across all of those repositories, we had eight pull requests merged from six authors. Uh, I missed actually which ones uh, Tim read off, but there are four names in here I don't recognize, so that's great to see um, new contributors and six reviewers. The oldest pull request merge was 19 days old, so it's good to see we're still keeping up with older ones, and the rest were more recent. That leaves us with 31 open pull requests, which is up from last week, uh, but that's good to see that people are still contributing, and I think um, at least six of those are waiting for me. Uh, we had 11 issues closed by 
or by seven people and 16 opened by 11 people, leaving us with 645 open issues. 175 of those are good first issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. It'll have all this information and more. If you're new to everything and you want to contribute code or documentation, check out the good first issues. Um, and don't worry about learning uh, Git and GitHub. We have a guide and also we're always available on Discord to help out. We want to make sure you can contribute in a way that works for you. If you're looking to get started reviewing, there is a list of open pull requests. You can check those out, uh, leave a comment, test it if you have the hardware. Um, let us know if you find any issues or if it looks good to you. This is always helpful and we will, once you're comfortable with that, we can talk about um, leveling you up to our review team. Uh, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, there were no new libraries. The short list of um, updated libraries in the notes that I will not read off, but those are available there if you're interested. And that's what I've got. Awesome. Thanks, Katni. Uh, next up, we will hear from maker Melissa about the state of Blinka this week. Hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had zero pull requests merged. There are currently four open pull requests amongst other repositories. And there was one closed issue by one person and zero open by zero people, uh, leaving a net of 76 open issues. There were 8,063 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month. And we are currently supporting 89 boards. And that's it. Thanks, Melissa. Right, so that gets us through the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinkas. Uh, so the next up will be the Hug Reports section. Uh, and again, Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and by beyond for doing awesome things. Uh, as mentioned, this section is held as a round robin where I will start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically. Um, if you haven't already, please do go ahead and add your notes to the document. And if you have your notes in there but can't speak or would prefer not to speak, uh, just put a note that says text only, and then I will read yours uh, when we get to you in the list. Um, so I'll start it out this week. Let me take a timestamp. Um, hug reports this week to uh, Scott. Thank you for working on the uh, web workflow. I'm super excited about uh, the possibilities that this brings and also helping me uh, get it up and running on my end uh, the other day on the deep dive. Um, next up, thank you to uh, Neerdoc and Tectric, who both uh, put in some fixes for Circup uh, in, the in the past day or so. So thank you to both of those folks. Uh, and next up, I will send it over to Dan. OK, thanks. Um, repeating, uh, thanks to Neerdoc for the quick fix to Circup. Um, thanks to TAC who's working on multiple LUNs so that, for instance, if you plug in a Pi portal, you can see both the SD card and CircuitPi. Um, I tested it. It works OK on Linux and Mac OS. On Windows, it, it doesn't work that well, and I'm considering what to do, what we might do about that. But that would be very nice if you could see more than one file system when you plug in a board. You have to mount the file system. And thanks to Scott for working on the web workflow. I tried it out and approved it. And uh, it's under debugging right now. OK. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Uh, lots of exciting stuff in the works, sounds like. Uh, next up, we will send it over to uh, Jeff. Hello. I'm still not really back in the swing of things yet. So all I have is a group hug. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, next up is Katni. Hello. So uh, first up, a hug for Tectric for working through the process to move from setup.py to pyproject.toml. Uh, to Toddbot for explaining a Python concept in a way that I was able to understand. And for Neradoc for helping explain the same concept. Uh, to you, Tim, for writing and continuing to help with the GitHub Action status light code. To Rose for designing a 3D printed stand for the tricolor USB tower light to Tectric again for putting in quick fixes for bugs, um, to my dad for agreeing to take the lead on building a room in my basement, for stopping by to measure everything, get an idea what we're looking for, and putting together a parts list for the project. Uh, to Rose again for putting so much effort into the mailbox project receiver code and persevering in the face of multiple obstacles. 
to uh, Jeff for a lovely chat and a great plug. All right. Thank you, Katni. Uh, next up, we will send it over to Kmatch. Uh, thanks, Tim. I've got one hug this week to BablockB, a uh, user on GitHub, for a pull request performance update to the display shape sparkline library, which improves how it redraws the performance of that, and it's more flexible. Thanks a lot. Nice. Yeah, thanks, Kmatch. Uh, I'll have to uh, look into that when I saw that go by, but I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but that's great to, great to see. Uh, next up is Liz, uh, Blitz City DIY. Uh, hug report this week from Melissa for adding multiple display support for the HT16K33 LED matrix driver. I'm currently using two of them as a GUI for a project, and it's working really well with CircuitPython. And a group hug. Awesome. Thanks, Liz. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Hi. Uh, group hug to everyone who kept things going while I was out for the last few weeks. And that's it. Thanks, Melissa, and welcome back. Uh, next up is Mark, uh, who is missing the meeting today, so I'll read Mark's. Uh, Mark has hug report for Toddbot and Paint Your Dragon uh, for examples and tutorials uh, that were used to make the Googly Eyes project work. I uh, haven't seen that one yet, but that certainly sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and then next up, a group hug. Uh, Mark says he's sure that he's missed uh, thanking some people over the last couple of weeks. Um, and so then next up is Neradoc, who is also text only. Neradoc has a uh, group hug for all the group hugs I didn't give in the past, uh, to Foamy Guy, me, for interactive streams, um, to Tectric for the PRs and reviews on CircUp and other things, to Dan H uh, for all the discussion and responsiveness on CP issues and PRs, to Katni, uh, Scott, and PT, etc. for the opportunities to work with Adafruit. Uh, excellent. Thank you, Nier Doc, for your hug reports. And then... Next up is Tammy Makes Things, who's also text only today. Uh, Tammy has hug report for Dan H for a speedy response to uh, async IO import error that uh, Tammy ran into last week and a group hug for everybody else. Uh, and then next up is Scott. Hello. Uh, from me, a hug report to Naradoc, Dan H, Retired Wizard, and Foamy Guy for testing the web workflow. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Uh, and then rounding out hug reports this week is Tectric, who's text only. Uh, Tectric has a hug report for the team behind Dependabot for neat code uh, that was used for parsing arguments uh, to set up Py, uh, excuse me, to set up function inside set up Py files uh, so that uh, Tectric can automate building the new pyproject.toml files. Uh, and then a group hug as well. All right. Uh, so thank you to Tectric, as well as everybody else who participated in Hug Reports. Um, getting into our next section here, Status Updates. Uh, let's take a timestamp for that one. Status Updates is our time to sync up with what we're doing. Uh, this section is also held as a round robin, where I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically. Uh, everyone will have a chance to participate. Uh, when I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be up to until the next meeting. Uh, this is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. Uh, and if a discussion does start to become too long, we can always move it down to in the weeds section at the end. So I will get us started here on status updates. Uh, last week, I tried out the newest version of the web workflow, um, and I got the edit page that I began working on uh, much earlier in development uh, back up and, and functional again. Uh, so playing with that was a lot of fun. I still have a couple of tweaks I want to make before I get a PR in uh, with the edit page. Um, the other basically main thing that I spent uh, time on this week is the Octopus uh, game and watch game that I'm building for uh, Pygamer. Um, so at this point, the all the core objects inside the code that control the, the more complex aspects of the game are completed. I have those uh, classes functional. Um, and the most basic game mode is implemented. Um, the stuff that I'll be continuing on to this week is actually rounding out the second uh, game mode. Uh, all of these Game & Watch games had two modes uh, in addition to the watch as well. Um, so I'll be working on the second game mode and just fleshing out all of the uh, specific uh, behaviors and interactions uh, with the different ways that those modes work. Um, and then also uh, I need to get the first draft of the learn guide out of my head and down onto the, uh, the pages. Um, so that's what I've got in the works this week. Um, and next up, I will pass it over to Dan. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, so this week I tested and reviewed the web workflow from Scott. Um, and I've been working on ESP, I'm porting CircuitPython to plain ESP32 chips, those suffix, and uh, specifically targeting the uh, ESP32 V2 feather. Um, and so I have the REPL working. Uh, I'm debugging because there's no native USB on this. You have we have to use something like Thani or other utility programs to upload files to this board. And when I try to do that, I have all kinds of problems. So I'm debugging that right now. It probably reflects some other problem um, with the port, and I haven't narrowed it down yet. But I'm doing all kinds of things like logging to an alternate UART port and things like that. So uh, I hope to get that working uh, at some point enough so that we can put do a, a, a pull request and then um, have people try this th try this out. Okay, that's it. Nice, thanks, Stan. Exciting, uh, exciting news in the world of ESP32 for sure. Um, next up, we will hear from Jeff. All right. Uh, so last week I was still getting over being sick, so I wasn't particularly productive. I did a couple of small pull requests, one of which was merged. It changes the way we install the compiler tool chain for the ARM targets. Uh, it doesn't make a real difference. It just simplifies the um, GitHub workflows a tiny bit. Um, and then I did a small amount of work on RGB matrix for the ESP32 S3. And because I was under the weather, I wouldn't read too much into anything exactly that I discovered. But it looks like right now, the support appears to be built into CircuitPython, but it just crashes. Uh, Paint Your Dragon made a new driver that uses the LCD peripheral of the ESP32 S3 to drive an RGB matrix. And I tried to convert that code into CircuitPython and I got weird results. Uh, so this week I will uh, be continuing to look into that. And under the heading of not CircuitPython, I've been looking at the recently landed RP2040 support in QMK, uh, which makes it easier to make keyboards out of RP2040 boards, like the KB2040. Uh, looks really cool. No CircuitPython inside, so uh, not exactly uh, relevant unless you like keyboards. Anyway, that, that's what I got. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next up, we will hear from Katni. So last week, began working on the GitHub Action Status Light Guide, completed most of the text content. Assembled the tower light and stand. Uh, the tower light used in this in the stati status light guide has a USB cable coming out of the bottom, but the base has no clearance for the cable. So as is, it sits on an angle and it's wobbly. Uh, Rose designed a bolt-on stand with a track for the USB cable, and now it sits super solidly on a flat surface. This week, I need to finish this guide. It needs a few more screenshots and images. Um. There are five PRs outstanding for the first five libraries that we want to move to the pyproject.toml for testing. Um, I need to go through and approve those. Uh, there's a new feature in Learn I need to test. I'm going to be setting up Discord AutoMod this week. Um, and then also go, th there's a few PRs that are open that I'm tagged on that are waiting for me that I need to do some things to move them forward. Uh, this past weekend, reduced the mailbox project LoRa receiver Pi code down to only making the LED blink and showing you got mail on the bonnet OLED and traded SD cards with my dad. So now he has a simple working version of the mailbox notifier. He's very excited and we'll sort out sending him phone notifications when we have time. There were a ton of obstacles that was some of them were very obscure things that we had to figure out. Um, and uh, so we, we've had to change up how we were going to do that multiple times now. Um, hopefully we can sort something out soon. And begin emptying the majority of the basement into the garage or into other parts of the basement to prep for partitioning off a section uh, into a room. And that's what I've got. All righty. Thank you, Katni. Uh, next up is K-Match. Okay, thanks, Tim. Uh, continue work on uh, touch screens and considering what is required and actually what makes sense to add into the circuit circuit Python core uh, for touch screen or uh, reading touch screen events uh, with the particular objective of how to reduce latency between touch and how you can respond to it um, I reviewed the event queue that's used in the keypad module 
So that looks like a good framework uh, to use. Uh, and so the next steps towards understanding whether this makes sense is to see whether adding an event queue using a touchscreen interrupt pin and then a subsequent I2C call to get the touch data uh, makes sense. Uh, and then it, and in typing this, it reminded me of some discussion related to the uh, request for interrupt or async operation was a generic question whether a generic capability of including or defining an interrupt pin to trigger grabbing some I2C data into an event queue makes sense, as I think Dan proposed quite some time ago related. Uh, I may raise an issue just to get feedback on that generic capability and get feedback mm -hmm. of whether this makes sense. Um, so that's the first item. The second one is somewhat related, but uh, towards assessing whether this latency can be improved by adding an interrupt is also related to the display performance and a generic question. Feel free to add feedback in the Discord uh, if you have an answer, but I can't see a way to measure the display IO refresh rate. So if anybody has any hints on how best to do that in CircuitPython, uh, I'm all ears. So those are my two items. Thanks. All right, thanks, Kimmich. Uh, next up, we will hear from maker Melissa. Hello. Um, <clears throat> the last few weeks, I um, I updated the HT16K33 library to accommodate spanning text and graphics across uh, multiple displays uh, by only passing in multiple I2C addresses and a list or tuple and recovering from foot surgery. Uh, this week I am back and I'm gonna finish. I'm finishing up on catching up on emails, and then I'm still figuring out exactly what I'm gonna work on. But likely will be on the web workflow and code.circuitpython.org enhancements. And that's it. Awesome, thank you, Mark and Melissa. Uh, next up is Nerdoc, who's text only, so I'll read. Uh, last week, uh, Nerdoc made a library manager, uh, think Circa, but for the web workflow. Uh, maybe next on Show and Tell. Um, also, last week worked on a fix for Circup uh, crashing on unidentifiable MPY files. Uh, moving into this week, add a property to .env to change the BLE default name uh, for the BLE workflow. Uh, user code can set it itself, um, so this would allow like a configuration to set it from a file, it sounds like. Um, next item this week, a PR uh, fixes to the web workflow uh, cross-origin. Um, cross-origin restriction pre-flight pre implementation. Uh, and then adopt a cat. It's been almost two years without a cat in the house. Um, so that's definitely going to be a lot of fun. I imagine cats are a lot of fun to have around for sure. So that sounds cool. Uh, thank you, Neradoc. Uh, next up is Tammy Makes Things, who's also text only. Tammy says last week uh, she started working on a project to display uh, CI and CD status for work, uh, and that's uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment systems. Uh, on a matrix portal M4, the code currently is not functional because of a problem I ran into with async IO on that hardware, uh, but most of the code is written. Uh, preparing to give a CircuitPython demo at the Desert Pi meetup on Saturday, July 9th. Um, this week, uh, still hoping to get back to a regular streaming cadence, work and other considerations permitting. And then uh, the CircuitPython demo uh, at that Desert Pi Python meetup. Uh, so thank you, Tammy. And then next up, we'll send it over to Scott. Hello. Okay, so not a lot of details, but um, <clears throat> the web workflow is checked in. Uh, if you want to try it, uh, an S2 or an S3 with uh, the auto Wi-Fi credential set plus um, the CircuitPy web API key um, will get you going with that. Um, uh, it's not perfect for sure, so if you find issues, please either fix them like Neradoc sounds like they're doing, or file issues. Um, I know for a fact that I have some, like, task socket management stuff that I still need to work on. Um, and thank you to Retired Wizard for, for talking or filing some issues about that. Uh, but mainly what I'm working on is adding serial access uh, by allowing web sockets. So uh, web sockets are the way of doing serial over, it starts as an HTTP request and then switches to web socket. So 
Um, I've got all of that handshake stuff working, and now like I've just got to manage like holding onto the socket and like writing stuff to it and reading from it, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, mainly working on the serial view web sockets. Nice exciting uh, stuff for sure. Thanks, Scott. Um, mm -hmm. Next up is Tectric, who is text only, so I'll read them. Uh, so last week, Tectric uh, fixed documentation issue in the DPS 310 library that had uh, wrong units. Fixed an issue with Circup where the latest version of setup tools was incompatible with a version of a pinned dependency. Uh, working on moving the libraries from setup.py over to use pyproject.toml instead. Uh, created pyproject.toml files for a few libraries to begin uh, testing their use. Uh, make sure that uh, users aren't affected when they use pip to install those libraries. Uh, parsed, consolidated, and cleaned the requirements for each library. Built prototype pyproject.toml files uh, or uh, pyproject.toml.disabled files for each library to prepare and test, uh, automating the transition for the libraries when it uh, comes time to do the conversion on them. Uh, next week, uh, excuse me, uh, this week for Tectric uh, is gonna be deploying the pyproject.toml test libraries, uh, accounting for possible uh, optional dependencies for libraries uh, if we choose to use them inside the pyproject.tomls, Finalizing the PR to make uh, touchpads iterable inside of the Circuit Python, uh, excuse me, the Circuit Playground library. Uh, late hug, uh, uh, yeah, late uh, hug report, uh, group hug to Dan for making those pins hashable, uh, for making pins hashable, generally speaking. Um, and hopefully some more Circuit Python core documentation additions this week as well for Tectric. Uh, all right, so that rounds out the status updates. So the fifth and final section of the meetings uh, meeting is the in the weeds section. This is an opportunity for more long form discussions that either come out of status updates or have been identified ahead of time. Uh, if you have any in the weeds topics and you have not already added them down at the bottom, please do so. Uh, well, we have one in here now, so we'll discuss that one. But if anybody knows of another, uh, please go ahead and throw it in. Um, so it looks like our first in the weeds topic uh, is from Katni. Uh, Katni, do you want to tell us what you got? Yeah. So uh, I wanted to talk about Circuit Python Day. Uh, it is August nineteenth this year. It will be a virtual event. Um, if you're interested in joining in, hosting something, or being involved in any way, please reach out to me uh, by sending an email to circuitpythonday at adafruit.com. Um, we have had. Uh, other people host um, a show and tell in a different language, for example. Um, you can send in short videos of uh, you know projects you've worked on, or we may actually host uh, a show and tell on that day as well. Um, this is still early days in planning, so we don't know yet you know what exactly is going to be going on, but um, we want to hear from other folks as to what they might like to see or what they might like to do or how they might like to contribute. So I wanted to put that out there. I will probably be bringing it up um, every, every meeting until it happens. Um, just as a reminder and, and for folks who maybe miss individual meetings um, so that they also know. Uh, so yeah, if you, if you have any ideas or, or ways you want to contribute and we can try and figure out a way to make it work, um, like I said, send an email to circuitpythonday at adafruit.com. And that's pretty much what I've got. Awesome. Thanks, Katni. It's cool to uh, see it come up on the calendar and definitely looking forward to it. I'm sure I will stream at some point, but uh, I'll have to work out the details yes. later on. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> You're already on my list. Yes. Um, okay, uh, looks like we have no other uh, topics that popped up for In the Weeds, uh, so we will go ahead and move on to the wrap-up. Uh, so let's see, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for July the 5th, 2022. Thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that are paid to work on CircuitPython, please consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this uh, meeting will be made available on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, it'll also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, go to head over to adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that. 
Um, the next meeting will be held on Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, and that is on the 12th, of, no, that is on the 11th, excuse me, the 11th of July. Um, uh, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified of meetings and any changes to the day or time, you can also ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord, and you'll get a ping uh, anytime that those meetings do change. Um, so that's it for today. Thanks again to everybody, and we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.